Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, trying to uh, overcome a problem that's fairly uh, common and very common on these Mitchell reels. Uh, this one was sent in by Hector. He had asked me if I could do a video on the resolution for this. So we've got two screws on the side plate that came out, and we have one that's butterflied. And by butterflied, I mean you can't get the, um, the screwdriver blade in here and that's because the gap has widened on both sides from a stuck screw. Now, there are several ways to, to try before um, uh, what we're going to do on this one, but uh, the first would be to just try an oversized blade. So if that's the, the one side, try to step up one, kind of put some pressure in there, but again, this one's been so butterfly that's not going to work. The second one, which you can use on some fishing reels, is to get a, a mini, uh, like a Dremel, and just try to elongate the, uh, the slot so that you can move up to the bigger one. In this case, that doesn't work because we have a recessed screw, and that recessed screw is uh, kind of in the housing, so a Dremel would, would pretty much destroy the housing. So another way to do it, or to try to do it, is to get a micro file and again, same idea. Just come in and see if you can't widen that up. Let's try that right now. To try to remove the butterfly. Well, in this case, it seems to have a little effect, but we'll see. We'll give it a try. And a microfile, you gotta be careful about it. You don't want to ruin the, the finish on the reel, so you kinda have to work within certain boundaries. So the microfile here has got the same effect that a Dremel would have. It's kind of trying to, to take the wings out, cut a little bit deeper, and solve it that way. I'm having good luck on one side. I'm not having as good a luck on the other side. And then we can try again. I'm going to take the handle off because eventually we're going to have to take the handle off anyway. But what I've done here is I've used the micro microfile to try and cut that slot a little bit wider. We'll go to a wider screwdriver then. Try and sit it in that slot there. Now in this case it's still not working. So the, the last uh, resort here is to drill that out. So what we want to do with the drill, I'm going to use a drill press and I don't have the drill press nearby. But we're going to take a, a drill that you could use a hand drill with, align it with certain bits, and step up until we can knock just the head off of this one. We don't want to drill it all the way down. We're not going to be able to uh, retap a body like this. At least I'm not going to be able to retap a body like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you the setup for the uh, piece on my hand drill, and then I'm going to go to the uh, the drill press to drill this one out. So the first thing you want to do is you find the, the starter bit and you want to find the end bit. So the end bit you want is essentially the size of the screw head. So we will just take a couple out of a tray here. That's a little bit smaller. Yeah, that's about right on. So what you would like to do, and what I'll be doing over the drill press, you want to start with a very small one. I have a smaller one on the drill press. Center it, and just drill down, oh, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch, a very small amount, just to get it started. And then we're going to step up until we can get it to the point where that screw head is going to break off. You won't see that, but the, uh, the illustration of a city sort of will go like this. We're going to center it into the middle of the slot and we will drill. Of course the drill press will keep this nice and clamped down and it'll prevent that bit from wandering. That's why I will use that. Back in a moment. Okay, you will see that I've got it roughly centered, pretty close, close enough uh, in terms of drilling down to drill the head off. We're going to try this with the handheld for the next step. All 
Okay. And, and what you'll be able to see is it's just an iterative process. So we took a little bit more off with that. We'll change the bit out again and do it one more time. Okay, you'll see the end result. It just knocked it right out. Actually, the, the end of the bit caught it, pulled it right off just the way it was planned. So now when you remove, there you go, remove the side plate. We're going to be servicing this reel, but you'll see a stud now that's there. That's why you don't drill all the way down. Take your pliers or some other thing to grab that stud. Hopefully it's not stuck in the case. If it's stuck in the case, well, I don't retap, but you'll see how it's walking out now. And that's it. There's your stud that was uh, lodged in there. And all we need now is a replacement screw to reattach the case to the body after we do the servicing of this reel. If you're interested in the servicing of the reel, well, I'm going to continue. So I'll show you the Mitchell 300. I have several videos out there on it. But if you were looking at this because it's a Mitchell 300 and you were wondering how to service the reel, well, we'll continue. So you have a, a side plate that came off with this. There are several types of dog systems on the Mitchell 300. In this case, we have a plastic dog that has teeth on the end of it. And this is where I always recommend take the pictures of the reel as you're servicing it. This one has a plastic dog and the dog has a little spring that hooks in this, this little uh, cavity here on the dog. You'll see it. If you have the reel, you'll know it. And then it comes around the back of the dog and it lodges into the side case here. Well, we're going to take these gears off first. On the back end of this gear, there is typically a uh, shim washer or two. There's one here that I pulled off. That goes up back on the post, so make sure that you put it back there. And then we have the main gear, which will push out. These gears are aluminum, and uh, they're generally uh, fairly easy to get out. In this case, this one, of course, is going to make a liar out of me. So push it out. Use a screwdriver. I use a, a Phillips head screwdriver because it doesn't uh, damage the threads. And then you'll see why it was pretty difficult to get out because, well, there's a a whole bunch of old grease on there that's acting as a glue because it's all dried up. We're going to take penetrating oil and a paper towel and wipe all that old grease off. Be careful if you put that washer back on to leave it on there. Don't wipe it away with the, the rest of the dirt and debris and the like. Right, that's a nice clean case. You don't have to take the dog off. If you take the dog off, I'll show you how to do that. You take the dog off. Here's that spring that loads onto the side of it. Put the dog over the post and then pull the spring to seat inside the case, just like that. There's a carrier here or a track. I don't know the exact names for these. I probably should. It's got a stud on the back end of it that holds the axle shaft in place. Go ahead and take the axle off. I'm just going to lay these out. The Mitchell parts are big parts. You're not going not to lose them anywhere. And generally speaking, you could run a cotton swab through there to clean it off, or you can take the two case screws off because we're going to show you how to service this. I'm going to take these screws off for you. Sometimes you'll find it as a hex screw, not a round-headed screw. Uh, regardless, they all come out the same way. And then you can pull the slide here. And now we'll clean up underneath there. We're also going to take the... Uh, looking for my little tool. We're going to take the... This happens to be a Mitchell tool. It's one of the rare times that I'm actually using it on a Mitchell fishing reel. It's a deep socket. and enables you to get inside the rotor cup to remove the rotor nut. That's a 12 millimeter nut. You do not need the tool. Just go get a deep socket. Comes off in a counterclockwise manner. And then we'll be able to lift off the rotor assembly. And that rotor assembly underneath it has a baffle plate that also is, acts as the trip lever 
for the bale. This little piece here is going to hit the bale carrier or leg or trip lever or the like. And that's what's going to push it. If you're getting a, a knocking sound, a ting, 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 you, uh, there's a possibility that you don't have enough shim washers underneath this or that that's overbent. Here's how it will fire. When you open up your bale, the bale trip arm comes in, then it's going to bump against that piece, push it out, and fire the bale. This one seems a little loose. All right. Uh, you do not need to take the spring off of this on the bale arm if it's firing. A lot of people take it off, and then I get the questions, how do I put it back on? There is a video on how to reinstall the bale springs on a Mitchell 300 should you need them. Okay, I'm cleaning up the slide, getting rid of the old greases. Clean up the case next. As I mentioned on the other one about the, the small arm, you have an arm on this one as well, or an arm or washer, on the inside of the post here. So make sure that that's there when you go to reinstall. There it is. I knew it was there. All right, that's the little washer that goes on. Pretty simple. We can just put this right back on. Clean the bottom while you have it open. Check the teeth. These rarely bend. Check them anyway. Grease them up nicely. And also grease the inner shaft that it's going to ride on. Put your rotor back on. These are the shim washers I was referring to. They come from the factory with two or three of these. and. Uh, you need to pay attention. If you are switching out the rotor, you may need more or less of those shim washers. They're set at the factory for the rotor that's being installed. And uh, if you find that uh, your reel is tight or it's making that chirping sound from the baffle plate, then you either need to add one. You need to add one if it's making the chirping sound you need to take one away if the uh, reel is not firing, if it's not reaching reaching down. So give it a test right now. Turn it around. It's going to come in this direction and it fires and it doesn't chirp. So that's the way that that should work. Okay, continuing along then. It's kind of the reverse process now, right? A little bit of grease into the channel. Grease anywhere else is just a waste of grease. Put the slide in, there's a U section that's going to face up top. Let's go ahead and align that. We've got two, uh, two of those little screws. I'm going to use my screw starter here. It's becoming my new favorite tool, courtesy of Dick in Pennsylvania. Start to one side. Grab the other side. Just to get it started. Guess we're not lined up quite right. And I'm going to switch over to a regular driver. And again, yours might have a hex on it. If it has a hex sided on it, you can also use a small socket to remove it. All right, now we want to take the spool shaft. I never bothered to take it off the uh, spool. If you do, just push in, it'll take it off the spool. Clean it up, check for burrs, make sure it's smooth. And then we can put light coating of grease onto it. The flat side goes to the front as you install through the pinion gear. And make sure that you can see the hole on your little ramp or case or whatever you want to call this part, auxiliary slide, I don't know. 
I should know, I guess. I just know how it works. Grease on the back and grease in the teeth. Turn it around. That stud belongs in that axle shaft. So put that in. And then we need to, to put down the oscillation gear. Got some kind of silly putty grease here. Again, check the teeth on the gear. Make sure that they're all even, not uh, suffering from anything. And on the back, you're going to notice that there's three kind of studs. They're going to ride in that uh, in that set of grooves there. I'm going to put a little bit of grease onto the face here. And I'm going to grease the teeth on the gear. I find that if I put the carrier down low and get the three pieces and put those low, lock it in, that generally the slide will work the way it should. So let's give it a try. It should move the spool all the way up, and it doesn't. It got stuck. So when you get stuck, you just want to move it one turn. And try again. Up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. So if you're having an issue where you've rebuilt the reel and you can't understand why it's sticking, that would be the cause. All right, just a little bit of grease onto the back and a little bit of grease onto the post. Having taken care of the one side, let's take care of the other side. First in then is the main gear. Again, you wanted to clean that. I'm going to inspect all of the teeth. If they're damaged, you need to replace the gear. They're still available. They're all over the place. Mitchell made a couple of million of these reels, so you can always find them, both new and used. And you want to get the grease onto the first set of teeth and the second set of teeth. They both drive different gears. Let's go ahead and bring that back in. Next is our gear that's going to transfer the main gear to the oscillation gear. Same idea, check the teeth. That one sits this way and intersects with the, the smaller gear on the main gear. And remember, you had that little uh, washer underneath this one. So I'm going to go ahead and put that. This is going to drive the rotor. A little bit of grease on the outside there. So that's how you set the inner case up. All we need to do now is just bring this back, place that on the spool, find the screws, and I got to shut this off because I need to get the screw that we drilled out. So I'll do that right now. I'll come back and we'll give it a test. Okay, so I found a replacement screw. It should go in because we walked the other one out. There wasn't any trauma or anything associated with getting that one out. There we go. Good fortune and good luck. Okay, tighten them all down. Let's just scroll the handle, see how we did. So what have we learned? We learned that you can Get the side plate off. It's it's a little bit of iterative drilling. Start with a very small bit. Try to center it as best you can in the screw head. That's after you try using a wider blade of a screwdriver and after you try filing or using a Dremel tool if possible. If you have no other alternative, you saw that we started with a small drill head uh, and worked our way upwards, never exceeding the outside uh, diameter of the case. And in my case, I got lucky it snapped off at the right time. Uh, we walked out the stud that was behind it with a, a little uh, pliers, and we were able to replace that. So let's give it a try, see how we did. All right, well, we have the, remember we had the anti-reverse off because that's the way I recommend it. Now with it on, we got a nice stopper, functioning bail. Let's take that anti-reverse off. Nice, quiet, smooth running Mitchell 300 with a screw that is now replaced, a reel that is fully serviced. 
and I wanted to give them a second chance to go fishing again. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, please like it. Again, if you enjoy the Art of Real Replay, please, uh, please subscribe and use the notification button. To all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. Your efforts are appreciated. To all, get those reels ready for the spring. It's coming up. It's time to go fishing. Please stay safe, stay well, and have a good time out on the water. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.